is no ritual. It's terrorism. Isn't that a popular word these days? Not to worry. We've prepared a special ritual for you. <laughs> as much as we all loved Resident Evil 4, it was a major change to the franchise. It was the first Resident Evil game that would no longer stick to the horror elements that we loved from the previous games. The gameplay was different. The enemies were no longer zombies or hosts of the T-Virus. But most importantly, characters like Leon were altered to fit the action-adventure tone of the game. Some of you might already know this, but Resident Evil 4 was altered more than once. First, the gameplay was too much non-stop action and far too different from what the series is about. So Capcom decided to go a different direction with what they had and simply make it a different game and its own franchise called Devil May Cry. And after seeing the teaser trailer to Resident Evil 4, it appeared that they were going to stick with its horror elements, but this time it would involve paranormal enemies like ghosts and poltergeists, at least from the looks of it. The original concepts for Resident Evil 4 were made back in 2000. The official game came out in 2005, after Capcom decided to change the original concept of Resident Evil 4 into Devil May Cry, the series was no longer the same. In Devil May Cry, they gave the protagonist Dante a cool and overconfident attitude, something that was kept for Leon in Resident Evil 4. Leon originally had a much more realistic personality. In Resident Evil 2, you can see that he's not a guy who's trying to impress anyone. He doesn't act overconfident and he's not trying to look cool. He's your average guy. The only thing we knew about him was that it was his first day as a police officer in Raccoon City. And after seeing what's been going on in Raccoon City, his reaction is relatable. But in Resident Evil 4, he's Dante from Devil May Cry. My first thought on Leon's personality change was that Leon has changed because of his experience in Raccoon City. He's now more of a badass because he was capable of surviving a zombie outbreak with many deadly creatures, but then we get to a room with lasers. Identical to the laser room scene in the 2002 Paul W.S. Anderson film called Resident Evil. Let's go back and look at the first three versions of the Resident Evil 4 trailers. In the year 2000, Capcom began working on Resident Evil 4, but the drastic changes were what ultimately led to creating Devil May Cry. That game was released in 2001. Then, in 2002, Capcom revealed the first trailer to Resident Evil 4 known as the Castle version. It was shown at the 2002 Tokyo Game Show Spring Expo. We would be introduced to a new virus called the Progenitor Virus, and the castle shown in the trailer was known as Spencer's Castle. This means that the story would possibly tie in with the events of the first game since that game took place in the Spencer Mansion. But then, in 2002, we received a different Resident Evil game, Resident Evil Zero. This game was originally going to be released in the year 2000 for the Nintendo 64, but it was halted due to the limitations of the Nintendo 64, so they remade it and released it on the Nintendo GameCube. I mention this because the story of Resident Evil Zero gives us more insight on the Spencer family name, so it's possible that whatever they had in store for Resident Evil 4 involving the Spencer name was used for Resident Evil Zero instead which would make sense to why it took even longer for Resident Evil 4 to be released. If some of its story elements would be used for a different Resident Evil game, and then its gameplay elements would also be used for a different game being Devil May Cry. In 2003 at E3, we got another trailer known as the Hallucination Trailer. Here we see that Leon takes on possessed dolls in his hallucinations. This version recycled some assets of the castle version, then in 2004, the game still had not been finished and we received another trailer known as the zombie version. If you look at the gameplay they had in mind with the unreleased versions of Resident Evil 4, it looks like they were going with the same camera mechanics as in Resident Evil Zero. I'm not sure if this would have made the game even better than what we got, but it's interesting to see that the gameplay was going to be the same as what we've seen in Resident Evil Zero, or Resident Evil 1 the Remake and Code Veronica. But with all these changes made, why did they change Leon's personality and traits? 
How is it that he went from being a rookie cop to being sent to Spain by the president himself to find and bring back his daughter? Well, seeing that the movie of Resident Evil made over $103 million at the box office and the sequel Resident Evil Pacalize made over $129.3 million at the box office, this must have had the creators at Capcom thinking that everybody loved Paul W.S. Anderson's version of Resident Evil, with all its Matrix stunts, non-stop action, and unrealistic crap. The first Resident Evil film came out in 2002, and A Pack of Lies came out in 2004. So with these two movies making a lot of money in the box office, it's no wonder why Capcom decided to change the tone of the series and go with the non-stop action, Matrix stunts, and unrealistic crap instead. But like the first Resident Evil film, it somehow worked. I hate to admit it, but the first Resident Evil film is a guilty pleasure. It's worth watching even if you hate the rest of the movies. And even though we should have hated Resident Evil 4 for being the exact opposite of what we wanted, it was still a lot of fun. The game even went out to become Game of the Year. It was originally meant to only be on the Nintendo GameCube and because of how successful the game came out to be, it didn't take long for the game to be released on the PlayStation 2. And if we look at the game now, it's gotten even more releases than expected. And since Leon's character was altered to be more like Alice from the Resident Evil films, eventually every other character in the series would end up getting the same treatment. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I thought that Leon's personality changed because of the events in Raccoon City, and he also became an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat because he's been training to prepare himself against another outbreak that may happen in the future. But then, Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles gets released, and in that game we get to play through the events of Resident Evil 2 in an arcade shooter style. We see that Leon and the rest of the main characters like Clara and Ada still have the same attitude and skills as Alice from the Resident Evil films. Not bad. So now we know for a fact that everyone from the original Resident Evil games has been altered and we can no longer relate with any of these characters. It's a shame that the characters were altered to be more like Fast and the Furious characters instead of realistic versions seen in the original Resident Evil games. I much preferred Resident Evil with its horror elements and realistic characters, uh, excluding the uh, voice acting of course. Luckily, Resident Evil 7 seems to be stepping towards a different direction, a very good direction. We might be going back to what uh, got our attention to the franchise in the first place. One can only hope that Capcom has learned from the past and doesn't disappoint with the Resident Evil 2 remake. I'm hoping to see Leon and Claire go back to being realistic and not another cast member on Fast and Furious. Ashley. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, don't you know when it's time to throw in the towel? <laughs> no! Leon! <laughs> hmm, where's the satisfying sound of one's impalement? Don't fall for this old trick. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if so, please leave a like, share with others, and if you want to see more videos like these, subscribe to this channel. You'll find more than just Resident Evil content, like Dragon Ball, Gantz, Tekken, Mortal Kombat, and more. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr to find out when the next video comes out, and whatever random posts I make. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day. Hey.